In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new B-Link SER9 Max Mini PC. And one of the big reasons I wanted to get my hands on this was because it contains a newer Ryzen APU that I have not tested on the channel yet. Plus, when it comes down to it, for the past couple of years, B-Link has been kind of outperforming the competition when it comes to raw performance using the same chip due to their newer cooling systems and power management setups. So I do like what we've got here. And again, it's from their SER series. So we get that full aluminum chassis which does help out with heat dissipation. And this is also using their new MSC 2.0 cooling system. It's a multi-stage vapor chamber plate inside. We've also got a silent cooling fan and SSD heat sinks. And I'll tell you, for the past couple of years, B-Link has really stepped up their game when it comes to the mini PCs. Uh, their overall build quality is very nice. All aluminum construction on this Max model here, besides the bottom, which is a plastic cover. And inside of the box, obviously, we'll get the SER9 Max Mini PC. It also comes with our user manual, a six foot HDMI cable, and our power supply. So, this is one of the small form factor barrel jack 120 watt power supplies. Doesn't take up much room at all. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB Type C, and this is a 10 gig port, along with the full size USB 3.2 port. And moving around back, we've got our power input, 40 gig USB 4 port. Full-size HDMI, and this will do up to 4K, 240 hertz. Another 3.5 millimeter audio jack. DisplayPort 2.1, again, 4K, 240 hertz. Two full-size USB 2.0 ports. Another full-size USB 3.2 port. And when it comes to Ethernet here, they actually opted to use a 10 gig port. Usually we see one to 2.5 gigs on these, but we've got a 10 gig port on the Max model. Before we go any further here, I did want to give you a look at the internals, and it's pretty easy to get in here to upgrade the storage and RAM. We've got four screws on the bottom. We can pull that out. I've already removed all of the screws. There's also a little dust filter, which I'm not sure does much. It is constructed of metal. And down here, you can see we've got our dual channel sodium RAM. It runs DDR5 along with an SSD heat sink, and we've got two 2280 slots here. This came with a single one terabyte PCIe 4.0 SSD, but you can actually add up to eight terabytes of storage to this mini PC because both of these slots will accommodate up to a four terabyte drive. And like I mentioned, we've got a brand new cooling system. This is their MSC 2.0 multi-stage vapor chamber cooling system. Got a few images here. I didn't want to pull the whole unit apart, but uh, over on their website, they do explain exactly what's going on with this new vapor chamber system. And again, they state that we can do up to 65 watts continuously and not have to worry about this thing thermal throttling. When it comes to the overall specs, this is using the new AMD Ryzen 7 H255. Uh, keep in mind that there is a Ryzen 7 255, but this is the H model. Still based on Zen 4, but it's an FP8 socket. Eight cores, 16 threads. It's got a base clock of 3.8 and a boost up to 4.9. Radeon 12 compute unit RDNA 3i GPU. It is the 780M up to 2600 megahertz. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 megatransfers per second. This one came pre-installed with 32 gigs out of the box. We also have Wi-Fi 6, which is an Intel AX200 card. Bluetooth 5.2, and it's running Windows 11, but we've got an x86 platform, so we could run Linux on this, no problem at all. So first things first, I wanted to take a look at the BIOS because over on B-Link's website, they stated that there's two different power modes. There's a work, which I guess would be like a balanced mode. There's also a performance mode, which is gonna take this up to a 65 watt TDP. We've got our main from advanced, uh, AMD CVS hardware monitor. And from here, yeah, we can fully adjust the fan curve if we want to. I'm going to leave it in automatic mode right now. Uh, usually we get to AMD CVS, MBIO common options. And from here, we've got our GFX configuration. UMA specified, this is going to be our VRAM. We've got 32 gigs in total with this system. Given the RAM configuration, it's set to four out of the box. I'm going to go to 16. So a lot of people won't need to go there. Four to eight is going to be great but I do think I've got plenty of RAM here for system and uh, iGPU. So that'll leave us with 16 for system, 16 for the iGPU. SOC miscellaneous control. I'm not seeing the performance option. So from advanced, let's go to OEM features management. There it is. Power limit setting. Balance mode is gonna be a 54 watt TDP 
Performance mode should take us up to a 65 watt sustain. And of course, I wanna to go to performance mode with this system. And with their cooling system, which actually looks really nice with these newer systems, I think it'll be just fine. So with that, I'm gonna save changes, exit, and we'll get right into Windows. So far, with this thing in performance mode from the BIOS, it's a great performer. And as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 255. Definitely wanted to test this guy out. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600. And as we saw from the BIOS, I dedicated 16 to the iGPU, which is the AMD Radeon 780M. On paper, it says it only clocks up to 2600 megahertz. And I definitely want to take a look at that. But in performance mode, the TDP on the Ryzen 7 255 should do up to 65 watts. So what I've got here is CPU-Z. I'm going to stress this out. And right down here, I've got hardware info running. This does a sustained 65 watt TDP across the board. So you've got that balanced mode or what they're calling work mode. And then we've got performance mode. Either way you look at it, I mean, performance mode is probably going to be the way to go. You don't have to worry about battery life with something like this because it's plugged into the wall and you will get better performance out of this chipset on the CPU and the iGPU. So we're good to go there. There was one more thing that I wanted to take a look at before we get into benchmarks and gaming on this thing, and that's the iGPU clock. Again, they state that this will do up to 2600 megahertz. And I believe with other systems on that 780M, it boosts up to like 28 to 29. So we're a little under here at 26, but we'll have to see, you know, how performance pans out once we get everything. And yeah, I mean, it's just right there at 2600 megahertz. But so far through my testing, just using this as an everyday desktop system should work out pretty well for most people. So just head over here. This is not the same B-Link PC. This is their higher end unit. I mean, it's a beast, but it's pretty expensive. Everything loads up really nicely. And when it comes to like 4K video on this chip, I don't doubt that it's gonna do it just fine. So I do wanna test it real quick. We'll do the 4K Sony demo. Make sure we're at 4K, stats for nerds. And I'm gonna reset this real quick. We'll go back up, just so we don't have any drop frames starting out. Right up in the top left-hand corner. We shouldn't see this drop whatsoever. And we're at 4K 60 right now. We're streaming from YouTube, but if you wanted to run native videos from the internal drive or even, let's say, an external drive, it's going to handle it just fine. I mean, this little setup's got more than enough power for 4K 60 playback. In fact, I wouldn't doubt that this would do 4K 120 just fine. So yeah, definitely not a bad little system so far with this uh, Ryzen 7 255. But now I want to get into some benchmarks. We're going to run some CPU benchmarks and GPU benchmarks. Then we're gonna jump into some gaming with this thing. First up, we've got Geekbench 6 coming in with a single core of 2,524, multi-core 12,598. I was actually hoping to see a little more on the single core with this newer chip, but uh, I guess uh, if we up the wattage a little bit, which I do think the cooling system could handle it, we could get more out of this setup for sure. And the other benchmark I ran here was 3D Mark Time Spy, coming in with the 3,312. And I'll tell you, I mean, I've tested a lot of these chips with the 780M. This is a pretty decent score. Usually with something like an H series or an 8,000 H series, we take the wattage up to like 75 watts and see a little under this, around 3,200. And RAM speeds here will play a big difference in performance. We can only do up to 5,600 megahertz here. Would be nice to see something with some onboard memory, you know, up to 6,400 with this chipset. But the next thing I wanted to test on this system was some gaming. And the first one we have is Fallout 4 at high 1080p. With the newest update for Fallout 4, I figured they would have added FSR. I mean, we don't need it here, we're at 60. And we could theoretically run this at 120 like it is but I always run into weird issues with this game going past 60, so I just uh, kind of locked it right down. Not bad, couple dips here and there. If I didn't have that frame counter on, I'd probably never even notice it. I also wanted to test out Spider-Man 2, and this is one of those games that doesn't do very well with a lot of IGPUs out there. I mean, at higher settings at least. So with this, we're at medium 1080 with frame gen on. And I'll tell you, it feels smooth like this, but with a system like this, if you're looking to go 1080 and don't want to have to go to like very low settings with FSR set to performance, frame gen, it's going to be your best friend. 
Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings with no FSR. I knew it was gonna work really well on this setup. Uh, we've tested this extensively on the 780M. The iGPU here is basically the same thing that we're seeing in the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. So I figured we'd be able to do this, but at these higher wattages, when you compare it to like a handheld, instead of running at around 80 FPS, we're over 110 FPS on average. I also wanted to throw one fighting game in, Street Fighter VI, high settings, 1080, really good performance, and uh, this is one that I've always had a really good time with on iGPUs. Tons of settings to mess around with, and usually we go to medium with it on an iGPU, but with this setup at a 65 watt TDP, we're able to run this at 60 FPS, high settings, 1080. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps and total power consumption from the wall. For power consumption, I use a kilowatt meter, but I'm really impressed with the temps here. Through all of the testing, we were in performance mode from the BIOS, so up to 65 watts. On that Ryzen 7 H255 1080p gaming, we averaged 67 degrees Celsius, and the maximum I recorded through all of my testing was 83. That's uh, through benchmarks and everything. Nowhere near thermal throttle. And as for power consumption, this can be really important to people around the world who pay a lot for energy. At idle, this thing's pulling 8 watts, still in performance mode. 4K video jumps up to 12 watts. 1080p, 78 watts, so that's a pretty big jump from 4K to that. And the maximum I recorded from the wall was 93 watts in total. So overall, I think this is a solid mini PC. CPU performance is great. Would be nice to have a little more GPU performance, but we've got an iGPU and it's still that 780M. I love the form factor. It's got a premium look. Cooling system here is amazing, even at that 65 watt TDP mark. So if you're interested in learning a little more about the B-Link SER9 Max, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you wanna see running on this, uh, it could be games, it could be a different operating system. Let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. That's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.